truly an icon of the British railway scene, the Class 37 or English Electric Type 3 has proven itself time and again as one of the most versatile diesel locomotives ever to run on the UK network, providing a compact but flexible design that has been tailored to all manner of operations, ranging from top-end passenger expresses to rough heavy freight work. The requirement for what would later be designated their Type 3 locomotive under the 1955 modernization plan was a timely outcome for the English Electric Company, as during this period, the firm had a proven history and tradition of developing successful diesel and electric locomotives for the export market, one of the company's more successful designs abroad being their 90-class, which was used by East Africa Railways in Kenya and Uganda. All the fundamental components such as the engine, generator, traction motors and control gear had been demonstrated as robust in the most extreme of conditions, and a locomotive availability of 93% was achieved. A 2024 horsepower diesel engine being incorporated into the concept, which was designed to produce 1,840 horsepower when working on terrain over 9,000 feet above sea level. By 1958, the Type 3 power classification, which comprised locomotives with a power output of between 1,500 and 1,999 horsepower, was one not yet to be tapped by the various builders commissioned to fill this category. The only upcoming competitors in this field being the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company's Type 3, later designated Class 33, which would be tailored more for the southern region, while Bayer Peacock offered their own diesel hydraulic Type 3 Hymix, later Class 35, to the management of the western region. In the face of offerings from BRCW and Bayer Peacock, the British Transport Commission, or BTC, were impressed by English Electric's offer of a powerful, tried and tested design, built by engineers with considerable knowledge and experience in the field, and thus, without hesitation, the BTC awarded a construction contract to English Electric during 1959 for 42 locomotives based on the African design. These, however, would incorporate a D-rated 1,750 horsepower engine rather than the existing 2,024 horsepower unit while many of the internal components were also based on the same designs as those present inside the larger English Electric Type 4, allowing production to be quicker and the cost to be lower. Construction of the type began at the Vulcan foundry in Newton le Willows, but even before the first 42 units had been completed, British Railways, in their eagerness to replace steam with diesel traction at the first opportunity, placed multiple repeat orders for the upcoming English Electric Type 3, with 309 units eventually being commissioned. This demand overwhelmed the capabilities of the Vulcan foundry, which, aside from its various export orders to fulfil, was also in the process of delivering the English Electric Type 4s, later Class 40, the flagship Type 5 Deltics, or Class 55s for the East Coast Main Line, their smaller batch of 10 English Electric Type 2s, or Class 23 Baby Deltics, and the ubiquitous English Electric Type 1, later Class 20 thus meaning much of the work on the Type 3s was subcontracted to Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne at Darlington. Eventually, the first Type 3, D6700, was rolled out at the factory on December 2, 1960, and was officially allocated to Stratford Depot in East London for use on the Great Eastern Main Line out of London Liverpool Street. Initial allocations for Type 3s, upon their delivery from the Vulcan foundry, being Stratford, March in Cambridgeshire, Norwich Thorpe Depot, Ipswich, Hull Dairy Coats, Sheffield Darnall, later Tinsley from 1964, Thornaby, Gateshead on Tyneside, Cardiff Canton, and Landor near Swansea. In terms of differences between the classes as delivered, many of these machines varied in weight, with the first 120 examples being 102 tonnes, while the latter units weighed 105 tonnes, though in order to reflect their mixed-use role, all builds were fitted with Clayton RO2500 steam heat boilers for older forms of coaching stock, but with many either removed or isolated from the outset for dedicated freight work, and all Type 3s came as standard with no suspended English Electric 538-1A traction motors. Furthermore, English Electric incorporated the same Coco CP7 bogies within the Type 3s as they had for the Deltics, thereby meaning on a Class 37 bogey, one is able to observe the fittings for the Deltics cab steps, and vice versa, with these bogies being interchangeable between the two locomotive types. At the same time, 
The Type 3s continued to maintain English Electric's nose design for their diesel locomotives. Reasons as to this aesthetic choice, ranging from either crash protection purposes, preventing drivers from becoming mesmerized by the track sleepers, or taken as an influence from the famous cab units of the United States, such as the EMD F7 and Alco PA. The Type 3s entered traffic with a permitted top speed of 90 miles an hour, though plans were made to increase their top speed to 100 miles an hour for the western region in order to introduce a new high-speed service between London and Bristol, with 18 examples being modified for this service during April 1966 and operated in double-headed formation, though ultimately, due to excessive wear caused by constant high-speed running, these trials had ended by the turn of 1967, with single brush type 4s working 90 mile an hour services instead. Sadly, the start of the Type 3's life in service was not one without problems, most notably the inability of the class to meet the 93% availability figures of the East African 90 class, with British Type 3s, at most, struggling to attain 85% availability, while on December 17, 1965, D6983 became the first unit written off when it collided with derailed brush type 4 D1671 near Bridge End, becoming the youngest British locomotive to be scrapped after only 13 months of work. Regardless, the English Electric Type 3s, later designated Class 37s, would find work on every region of the UK railway network, with their range of operations including heavy freight coal, oil, china clay, intermodal and parcels workings, as well as top-end passenger expresses on the Great Eastern Main Line, beyond the end of the wires at Colchester to Ipswich and Norwich, secondary passenger workings also being a domain of the type across the entire length and breadth of the country. With the onset of standardisation in the early 1970s, as a means of cutting down the vast array of modernisation-era diesel locomotive types, the Class 37s were allocated as the primary Type 3 locomotive, and were capable of working all manner of loads either individually or in pairs and trios. The high-demand Scottish coal trains out of Glasgow's Moss End Yard often requiring the use of up to three locomotives to haul a single service. Another difference among the Class 37s was their alternating front head code layout, with earlier examples including a split head code so as to accommodate a front access door into the nose of the locomotive, with all of these units being allocated to Northern England and East Anglia. While midway through production, the nose door was abandoned and a single centre box head code was employed instead, with these later units being allocated to Wales in the southwest. By the 1980s, Class 37s were essentially the backbone of British Rail's operations across the UK, supporting all manner of work and seeing various modifications administered in order to make them suitable for the ever changing railway market, some examples being fitted with electric train heating or ETH equipment thus becoming the Class 37-4, and were used initially on the Far North Line, the West Highland Line, the Welsh Marches Line, and services around Bristol and South Wales. Other variations included the 37-3s, which were re-bogied but not refurbished, 37-5s, which were refurbished, rewired, and had their original English electric generator replaced with a brush traction alternator, the 37-6s, which took the 37-5s and modified them further with ETS wiring and RCH jumper cables for use on the failed Nightstar cross-channel sleeper service, and 37-7s, which had their English electric generator replaced with either a GEC G564AZ or brush alternator with additional weight added. Of interest were the 37-9s of 1986, which had their English electric generator replaced with a brush alternator and new engines in either the form of a Murley's MB275TT or a Ruston RK270TT applied as a means of developing a new freight locomotive dubbed the Class 38, one of a series of freight engines across various applications that would combat the likes of the American Class 59. But due to the changing priorities of the BR management, the Class 38 plan was dropped and only the heavy freight Class 60 was taken forward. Come the 1990s and the start of privatisation, an imperative of the new private companies was the replacement of modernisation plan era locomotives in favour of stronger and more flexible alternatives, the freight sector responding in the form of the Class 66, which provided a highly flexible machine that could cover both heavy and lightweight applications, with redundant Class 37s under ownership of the primary freight operator, EWS, 
being either sold to other companies or scrapped. However, an interesting second life for the Class 37s came in the form of their export to France and Spain to assist in the construction of high-speed railways, with 40 units eventually being shipped to work on the LGV Mediterrane line to Marseille between 1999 and 2000, these trains usually working double-headed so as to manage the heavy infrastructure loads, but could also be seen working with up to six engines per train, the contract for Class 37 usage in France ending in October 2000, with most units returned to the UK. For passenger operations, routine high-end work for the Class 37s had long given way to electric and diesel multiple units by the turn of the new millennium, though these machines could still find regular service on secondary passenger trains, including services around the South Wales Valleys, the Holyhead to Birmingham via Chester service, various trains in the Norfolk Broads, and the Caledonian Sleeper in Scotland, as well as various charters and ad hoc workings. Among the last routine uses for the Class 37s in passenger operation was on the Settle and Carlisle line, to cover for a shortfall in DMUs for Arriva Trains Northern, as well as on a worker special along the Cumbrian coastline between Carlisle and the nuclear facility at Sellafield, done in combination with repurposed Driving Brake Standard Open or DBSO push-pull cab control cars. As of 2020, 65 units are known to still exist in the ownership of mainline freight operators, though not all are operational, with various examples being used for spares donors in order to keep the wider fleet going, while Network Rail employs four Class 37s, now redesignated to Class 97, for use on test trains and infrastructure workings, being fully refurbished to include reconditioned engines, somewhat updated cabs, all new signalling systems, and extensive rewiring. In preservation, the compact dimensions but superb power and reliability of the Class 37s make them a darling of heritage railways across the UK with 34 examples having been preserved, including the original Class Premier D6700, which now resides at the National Railway Museum, while several examples have actually been returned to the main line from preservation for revenue-earning work with train operators, and 37372 has been donated to form the basis of a Class 23 Baby Deltic replica, which were of a similar design to the Class 37s. In summary, the Class 37s were an exceptional series of machines that provided sturdy underpinnings and a compact design that made them ideal for work in all manner of applications, proving themselves to be strong performers in both freight and passenger operation, a testament to which is their continued use in regular mainline service to this day, over 60 years after the first examples ventured onto the network.